What's up guys, welcome back to the iOS development channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use or how to create a form in Swift UI. Okay, so forms in Swift UI. And I'm also gonna be showing you how to keep track of the username and password with state in Swift UI. We're also going to be touching on navigation views, navigation titles, H stacks, text fields with padding, shadows, clip shape, and backgrounds, just to kind of get all of the effects that you see here, okay? It's only about 40 lines of code total, and that's including some of the boilerplate, so it's pretty simple stuff, and we should be able to bust through it pretty quick and get that information over to your head, right? Now, before we dive into it, I just wanna show you uh, my other YouTube channel, because I'm starting to do vlogs, okay? So if you go to my other channel, it's all my featured channels on this channel. So if I go to Max Codes, you'll see it's right here. Okay, now I'm gonna click there and you'll see that I just uploaded a video on should I learn web or iOS development, okay? Now, I highly recommend you watch this video because I think it will provide some value to you if you're a little bit confused on where to start in coding, maybe you're new to Swift and you're just learning Swift UI. I don't know, either way, just go ahead and check this video out, subscribe to my other channel. I'm gonna be posting all sorts of vlogs and stuff like what Joshua Fluke posts and all of those other guys in uh, tech on YouTube, right? Okay, so let's dive into the project. Let's create a new Xcode project. I'm gonna choose single view app and I'm just gonna call this form in Swift UI. And I'm gonna hit next, make sure use Swift UI is selected, hit create. And let's go ahead and dive into it. All right. And I'm sure some of you are wondering where the rest of the linked list videos are. And I'm gonna phase release some videos over the next week with all of the linked list methods, if that if you're wondering. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, if you compile this, you're gonna get the hello world text. So what I'm gonna do is first select the iPhone XR simulator up here. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of close off the side here because I don't need it. I did that with command zero. Okay, so command zero, pretty neat trick. If you if that helped you out, drop a comment and let me know if uh, you want me to kind of talk about those shortcuts more often because I use a lot of them and I don't really talk about them usually. Okay, so text hello world, let's get rid of that and let's just throw in a navigation view. So what I wanna do first is I really want to get in that title. Now, one thing I wanna say is at any point in this video, if what you're coding is matching mine and it's not compiling, what I would do is I'd restart Xcode, maybe restart your computer, and if it's still not working, make sure you have the latest version of the Xcode beta. I believe I'm on the beta three. Uh, the latest is beta four, I think. All right, let's go ahead and continue. I'm gonna say H stack, and then at the end of the H stack here, I'm just gonna say dot navigation bar title. And that should give us some auto completion. It looks like it's not really loading, but if we just say dot navigation bar title and we throw in some text here, it should work. So I'm gonna say login form. Okay, I'm gonna compile that. And uh, it looks like this doesn't work because there's nothing in it, right? So what I wanna do is just throw in some text and let's compile it and we should be good to go. Okay. So go ahead and compile that and you'll see we're kind of looking a little bit closer to what you have here in the completed app. Okay, so what we wanna do is obviously not put the ASDF, we wanna put in this form, right? So what we can do is we can start creating text fields. So let's say text field. And what I'm gonna do is select the text or the title with binding. This top one is deprecated, which I'm kind of confused as to why it's still in here. But if you use that top one, it will say deprecated. Okay, so go ahead and type out text field. Let's choose the title here. And for the string protocol, we don't know, we don't have to pass in a text like we did in previous versions of the beta, right? So all we have to do is pass in title, right? So let's go ahead or a string and let's say username. And then for the binding, what we wanna do is say username. Now, what is this doing? Well, it's gonna bind it to a state variable. So let's say at state var username is equal to an empty string, okay? And what I'm gonna do is just say place holder, and I'm gonna misspell it without the E just to make sure that you know that it's coming from username because maybe text field by default says placeholder, I don't know. But what, we, what I'm gonna do is misspell it so that when we compile it, you'll see that it has that exact text inside of our text field, okay? 
or at least that's what I expect. Okay, so placeholder, awesome. So I'm gonna put the E back in there just so you knew for sure that that was coming from the username. Okay, and now what we wanna do is we want to add in some styles to this real quick. But before we can really see the styles on the text field, what would be best is if we added more styles to our H stack. So let's go down to the H stack and let's say dot background and we'll say uh, view, right? And then the view is gonna be a color. So we'll say color, which is a subclass of view and we'll say dot init, okay? Now for the red, it needs to be out of 255, same with green and uh, blue. So what we'll do is we'll say 50 out of 255 and we'll say 50 out of 255 and 50 out of 255, okay? Compile that and while it's loading up, let me pull this up. You'll see that it's that black color, okay? That kind of subtle black gray color. Okay, perfect. Let's give it some padding now though. And we can do that by saying dot padding. And you can put in a custom value like 23 or something, but the default I believe is somewhere around 10 if it's not 10. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do for that, okay? Perfect, you'll see it looks really good. Now let's go ahead and add some styles to the placeholder because that black text isn't sitting well there. You can't really see it, right? So let's go ahead and start by saying dot background is color.white because it takes in a view so we have to say color it's not just going to infer the dot white like it would in ui kit with ui color right okay so let's compile that and let's see what we get okay so waiting a second for that color to come in and it looks a little bit better now we kind of want it to be inset a bit right the text and then we want some rounded corners. So first thing we need to do is put in some padding so it's inset and then we need to use a clip shape to get that kind of clipped rounded effect, right? And then it's really hard to see but there is actually a shadow underneath the text field itself so we'll add that as well. So three properties. Okay, so let's start with the dot padding and we're going to choose the edge inset selector or initializer and or parameter rather, and we will say edge insets. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put eight for the top, 10 for the leading, eight for the bottom, and 10 for the trailing. So a little bit more on the left and right. Okay, now we just want to say dot clip shape, and we will take in a shape, and this shape is gonna be a rounded rectangle because we're dealing with a rectangle and we want it to be rounded. You'll see it says a rectangular shape with rounded corners aligned inside the frame of the view containing it. Okay, so it's a rounded shape within the view. Okay, so within the text field, and that's what's gonna give it that rounded look within the text field. Okay, so rounded rectangle with a corner radius, pretty straightforward, of eight. Okay, and then the last is the really subtle one that you can't really see is the shadow. We're gonna choose a radius of eight for that as well. Okay, so if we compile that, we're gonna be really close to our finished application. Uh, you'll see after a second here, it should look good. Let me just recompile that just in case. And uh, okay, so it's not looking, I didn't expect this output, but what we'll do is we will go on and we will create the button here, right? And then once we have that done, we will, yeah, we'll go ahead and finish this and then we'll copy it to get the second text field, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go ahead and in this H stack here, let's put at the bottom here a button. Okay, now the button is gonna take in an action and a label. Now for the action, that's up to you. I'm not actually gonna be doing any action in here, so I'm just gonna leave it blank. Make sure you put in some brackets though or it's not gonna compile. And in here's where you might modify state, you might take that state and pass it into a network request to log in your user. Okay, so that's where you'd put in like your call to maybe an action if you've ever done any React. That verbiage is familiar to you most likely. Okay, I'm gonna hit tab and for label, I'm just gonna hit return and I'm gonna put in some text and the title here is gonna be login. Okay, now I'm gonna throw in some basic properties here. So dot color, not dot white, but dot color is gonna be dot white. Now notice how I didn't say color dot white. Now the reason I did just dot white is because this color property expects a type of color. So it's inferred, okay? That's what inferred means. It's inferring that this is gonna be a color property. So we can just say dot white. Up here, a background takes in a view. Now color is a subclass of view, so we can still put in a color, but it's not gonna infer that we're putting in a color. So when we say dot white, it's wondering 
that's not view and it doesn't know that it's a color, right? So it can't put it in. But if we specify, hey, we're putting in a color, which is a view and is gonna be white, then it works. Okay, so that's why I did that. Hopefully that isn't confusing to you. Okay, now what we're gonna do is say dot padding. And for the padding, what I'm gonna do is the same padding as the username up here, okay? And for the background, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the background call from down here and put it right here. Except for now what I'm gonna do is change these values, okay? So instead of 50, I'm gonna put 242. And instead of 50 here, I'm gonna put 163. And instead of blue right here, I'm gonna put 64. Okay, and that's gonna give us that kind of swift color. It's a little bit grayer, a little bit darker of a, or a, a little bit less of a poppy kind of swift logo color but it's still a little bit close to the swift color right that orange color it's a little more subtle a little i don't know the word it's bothering me uh whatever okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in a clip shape so we can get it rounded right so let's go ahead and copy the clip shape and the radius of our username and paste it on the login here and we'll just do eight because we kind of want it to match it right and this is really weird because Okay, so now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably just not applying it because of the order of what we're doing, okay? Because you'll see for some reason it works for the button, but it doesn't work for the text field, why, why, why? And it probably has something to do with the order of our properties here, although I'm pretty sure I did it this way initially, so not sure why, but let's go ahead and try moving the padding above the background, okay? You'd be surprised at how interesting Swift interprets all this. Swift UI at least. Okay, you'll see it works. Okay, so yeah, you gotta, ordering matters with Swift UI is something I've really noticed. And it's really interesting because you'd think, why did that affect these two lines if we just swapped these two? And it's maybe because the padding didn't affect the background color here, right? And then now that it is, then these will apply better. It'll apply to the padding we have applied here, right? if that makes any sense. You probably understand what I'm saying, but like, we're both kind of like, how do you say that? You know what I mean? All right, so shadow radius eight, we're good there. And now what we can do is we can just copy the username one, paste it there, and we'll say password. And we'll copy the state variable here, and we'll say password. And I'll say pass here for the placeholder. And then let's obviously switch the binding here on the password to password. And let's give it a compile. And I think that is all we need to do. Okay, that's it. And it works really well. Now, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm curious to see if there's a way to protect this text field. So what I'm gonna do is say dot and see if there's a way we can protect it. Not in there. I'm using Catalina, so maybe I can command click on text field and protect it. I'm gonna hit inspect. And I'm not seeing anything on the protection. Maybe if I type in protect. Yep, not seeing anything. Didn't really expect to see anything. Interesting. Maybe it's in the initializer, maybe, right? Let's see, dot, hidden, hides the view. Probably not that. Let me try initializing another text field and see if there's an option in there. Maybe formatter. Hmm, interesting. Well, I'll have to look into that and make a video on protected text fields in Swift UI. But for now, this is how you create a form in Swift UI. And now what you can do is kind of mess around with these state variables and see them in a different light, right? So let's say I put the username in here. I'll say username. Let's say text. And I'll say username. 
and then I'll put another text and I'll say password. And what I'm gonna do is wrap this in a V stack. And then what I'm gonna do is make these both subtitles. So I'm gonna say dot subtitle or dot title type. I'm not sure, I can't remember how to do it. Dot font is dot title. Let's say subtitle, subheadline. All right, pretty easy stuff. All right, let's go ahead and compile it and we should be able to see a title there. Okay, so it's right there. It's kind of hard to see, but if we say something like dot color, we can say dot white. And we might have to change it to, well, not background, because that would just change the background color and make it look like a text field. So we don't want to do that. All right, let's go ahead and start typing in here. And you'll see it modifies it based on the values there. Okay. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And again, check out my video here. I'll link it first link in the description. That's a wrap. I'll see you in the very next video.